Hi, my name is Abigail Newland. I'm a prevention specialist with Preferred Family Health Care. This is just a quick overview of marijuana use from the Missouri Student Survey data. We're going to compare 2018 to 2020, talk about the state average. This data is focused in service area 13, which is the nine counties listed at the bottom of the screen. We talked first about availability and that 25.1% of youth who took the survey this year believe it is very or sort of easy to get marijuana which with all these states legalizing marijuana, that's just going to be easier for them to get that. Places where it is not legal, obviously it's getting easier and easier to get that on the school bus from older siblings, from parents, from the community, things like that. It's 2.2% higher than the 2018 data, so it's going up, of course, with legalization. It's 12.8% lower than the state average, which is great that that's way lower in this part of the state, but 25.1% still a lot. So use is lower here. So 4.4% of youth have used marijuana in the past 30 days. The state average is 8.9, so that's great. The northern part of Missouri, marijuana isn't a big deal right now. It's still a problem, growing problem, as legalization increases to recreational over the next couple years, those numbers could increase. It's obviously increasing 1.2% already in two years. How can we help kind of reduce some of this number, slow the rise in marijuana use in our youth? It's stuff like this, Red Ribbon Week, National Drug and Alcohol Facts Week, Prevention Week, and those are great opportunities to educate, spread awareness, um, share stories of others that have struggled, learn from other states that have legalized marijuana medically and have legalized marijuana recreationally, educate our youth about long-term effects, about consequences that could come with that, how it could affect their life outside of maybe the medical side, but maybe how it could affect getting a job, getting into college, um, things like that, how it impairs driving, things like that. Media campaigns are great. A lot of times there's already media campaigns happening and you can join in on those or share their material. Evidence-based school programs, there's lots of decision-making programs. There's still DARE, um, there's SPIRIT programs available, BRAVE, Guiding Good Choices. These three listed here, those are all really great for marijuana specifically, but implementing those in the school system, great way to get kids educated early on. So 94.8% of parents feel it would be wrong or very wrong to smoke marijuana once or twice a week. And so that is going down 1.2% from 2018, but that's actually 2.3% higher than the state average. And so that is very good that mo majority of people think that it's not okay, that it's dangerous on some level to smoke, and that's great that it's higher than the state average, which makes sense if parents don't approve of it. That's why use is lower than other parts of the state. So we look at the age of first use is 14.09 in 2020, and that's not great because, of course, you have to be 18 or older to be prescribed medical marijuana. We know that your brain's still developing until you're 25. So if people are starting to use when they're 14, that's scary. That's not good for the future. That's not good for brains for sure. So this is what we can do and it's basically just make a difference. Get out there, educate, spread awareness, share evidence, uh, join your school's community anti-drug coalition. If there's a sad coalition at your school, if there's a drug coalition, um, Mothers Against Substances, any kind of group like that, get involved. A lot of times they will cover many, many substances or many issues. Organize a drug prevention information fair or any kind of activity. Spread awareness at activities that are already going on, whether that's a local fair, a back-to-school event, whatever it might be. But we want to educate our youth because everybody, there's lots of data that can go either way, and it's it can be good or bad depending on who you're talking to. But get the facts, get all the information. We just want people to have enough information so they can make informed decision. Um, setting up programs to educate your peers and younger children about substance abuse. So being a mentor or role model for younger children can also be a positive impact. We're using illegal substances ourselves. It's very hard to tell students and kids not to use illegal substances. So being a role model matters. Parents, family members are the big, biggest influence in youth lives. So these are some resources on the right here. Feel free to look those up. And then other than that, that's kind of the wrap up for just a brief overview. If you want to learn more or join a one of our coalitions and work on marijuana use, just send an email to moprevention at pfh.org or you can get a hold of me at anewland at pfh.org. Thanks.